Present day, it's Alicia again, and I'm here to do a Bible study on Psalm 1. Now, before we begin, we'll invite the Holy Spirit into our midst. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and we present ourselves as your children. And as we're about to go into the Word, we want to pause and lift you up, give you thanks, exalt you on high, praise you, because you're worthy. You are holy. You are awesome. You are our God. You are our righteous Father. Right? And we are your children. We are in oneness by you. You have drawn us unto yourself. We are grateful. So, Father, we ask that you cast our sins away from us. Throw them very far from us. Blot them out. We do not want to see them again. And, Father, prepare our hearts purify our hearts sanctify us father with your holy spirit holy spirit enter into our hearts and dwell find habitation and breathe upon the words that we're about to read please um plant them in our hearts so that these words can bear fruits in abundance so that we can live and we can recall the words and we can reflect and we can meditate on these words so that we'll grow fruits in abundance. And Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for dying for us, Jesus. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for safeguarding us. Thank you for always interceding for us on our behalf. We are grateful. And so as we're about to go, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We exalt your name. We lift you up on high. We wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. We anoint our prayers and we send them to you, Father. May you find them as sweet savor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, it's, it's interesting that the psalm starts with a blessing, yeah? Because that's really what the psalms are all about, talking about the righteous and the ungodly, yeah? And one of the things that we can, can look at and, and identify a righteous person by is that they do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. They do not go seek counsel from those that are ungodly why because you have to be careful who your counselor is so that you will not be influenced in the wrong way and to do the wrong thing right so not only is the righteous not going to seek counsel from the ungodly the righteous is not going to stand in the way of sinners why because if we don't give sinners a chance to repent and to come into the family of God, we are going to become stumbling blocks. And remember, Jesus said the stumbling blocks are offense, right? We do not want to offend, right? Because our Heavenly Father is watching us and He's taking note and He will require it. So we do not want to stand in the way of sinners. We do not want to be um, excessively judgmental. We do not want to be executing um, judgment on persons because here is why we are sinful our very own self. Yeah? We may not be practicing sin, like falling into sin every day, but we are prone. We could fall into sin. So that's why we don't want to judge anyone. Right? Remember Jesus said, judge not, lest he be judged. For with the same judgment where we judge another, we will be judged by we do not want that to happen. So we should not stand in the way of sinners. We should let the let the church be open to receive sinners. Yeah? Just this one thing. They have to repent of their sins. They can come to Jesus and still continue in their sin. It doesn't work that way. But we are not to stand in the way of sinners. Yeah? And we're not supposed to sit in the seat of the scornful. Right? We're not supposed to be turning up our nose at people. And looking down our nose at people. That's prideful behavior. And you see, the scarner 
is very bitter. So we do not want to be that kind of person. We are supposed to be loving, kind, you know, showing tender mercies to one another, compassionate, reflecting the, the, the righteousness that our Father has, in, uh, has covered us in, right? Because if we do not love, something is amiss there. Let's continue. Verse 2. But is the light is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, our delight is in, the, is in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord. We feed on the word of the Lord. We, 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 we cannot go a day without the word of the Lord. We have to be in the word of the Lord, live in the word of the Lord, letting the word of the Lord guide us. And how do we do this? We meditate upon the word of the Lord, not just in the morning but day and night throughout the day constantly meditating upon the word of the lord because the word of the lord will lead us out of trouble the word of the lord will prevent us from falling into trouble the word of the lord will prevent us from yielding to temptation the word of the lord will let us know when temptation is coming our way basically this everything that we're gonna do the word of the lord is there for us in everything that we're going to do, right? No matter what we face, there is always something in the word of the Lord that is going to be able to caution us, counsel us, comfort us, reprove us, right? And teach us. The Holy Spirit is our, is our guide. So we will be led into all truth. We just need to be mindful, to seek, to get to know, to meditate, to yearn for, and to grow in the word of the Lord, yeah? Grow in knowledge in the word of the Lord, yeah? Let's continue. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, because we are meditating on the word of the Lord, because we are established in his righteousness we are going to be like trees planted by the by the water we are going to constantly be watered by the holy spirit right remember jesus said the holy spirit is like a spring in us bubbling up and never run dry right so we're going to always have connection with our father right because of our connection with the father he will pour out his blessing upon us Whatever we do will be prosperous because he will guide our hands, right? He will guide our lives, right? So we can be sure that the one who provides for us is our father. We are also in the true vine. So therefore, we will not wither, right? And with the Holy Spirit indwelling in us, we will grow fruits. So you see how it's becoming more and more vivid now like a tree? <laughs> Yeah, because the Holy Spirit is who waters us and keep us and replenish us and, and, and give us new mercies every morning. Yeah, so let's continue. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. See, the ungodly don't have no anchor. They're just being tossed to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. Like just leaves that have fallen off the tree, just being tossed to and fro yeah and this is very very bad because the ungodly doesn't have a foundation the ungodly doesn't have an anchor they don't have a secure place of safety yeah and you see because this that safety is only in our god but if the ungodly doesn't respect god and does no god then you see you see, you see how that could become a problem yeah so this is a caution to us as well those of us who are anchored in the Lord, let us not look down on the ungodly like, you know, they're so pitiful. Yes, they're pitiful, but let's not look down on them. Let us extend a hand, yeah, to show them the way in Jesus, yeah? But we will not take counsel from them, eh? Because we do not want to become like them. We do not want to be influenced by them. And we do not want no part of their ways. So we ain't going to keep company. But we will extend a hand. We will share the gospel with them. If they want to yield, then so be it. If not, then so be it. 
but at least they can say they never know Jesus, right? That's our responsibility. But we must be mindful. They're like chaff, eh? So the wind drive them away, eh? What does that tell you? They have no direction. Except the Holy Spirit helps them, they would, they would all together be driven away. Yeah? So, verse 5. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Right? Because of the nature of the ungodly, they cannot. How will they lift their head in judgment? They're condemned. They have condemned themselves already. Yeah? If a person refuse or reject Jesus, then there's nothing they can say in judgment in defense of, of themselves. Yeah? And sinners, when a sinner is in the presence of righteous people, they're being convicted. Is either they're going to yield from their sin and become saved, or they're going to depart. But you will often find that Sinners are not very comfortable in your presence. And that's okay. That's okay. It's not that you're running them or turning them away. But it's just that the Spirit of the Lord dwells in you. And oftentimes, not looking down on any sinner, but sometimes sinners have demons in them. And the demons cannot stand us. Yeah? But we still extend a hand of love in their direction. We still tell them about Jesus because we want them to be saved. And we're not looking down on them as if, because we ourselves were once like them, yeah? So we share, but we know that no sinner can stay in the presence of the Lord. And that's what this congregation of the righteous is all about. No sinner can stand before God, yeah? That's the ultimate congregation. That's where we're, that's where we're heading to. So this psalm is very much thorough. Sinners are not welcome. Yeah, that's why we have to be saved. We have to be born again. We have to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. We have to be kept. A new man has to emerge and we have to throw off the old man and his ways. Yeah. Um, verse six and last. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, the way of the righteous is Jesus. He is the way. Yeah. And the Lord knows because Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. But the way of the sinner, the way of the ungodly, the sin leads to death. So that's why they perish. So unless a person turn to God, unless a person accept Jesus, they're going to perish, unfortunately. So we hope that everyone will be saved because that's the hope of our Father. So this psalm is basically summing up what the reality is, the reality of life is, and basically telling us how to walk in the way, right? So as we go throughout today, let us reflect. Let us reflect and let us, let us ask the Lord to guide us so that we will always stay in his presence and we will always be his children, yeah? Let's pray. Heaven Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We honor you. We give you thanks. We we, we portray ourselves before you. We 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 humble ourselves and we ask that you will reach down and touch our hearts. Touch our hearts so that we will understand that you are our God, our King, our Creator. Give us the confidence we need to understand that we should cry out to you in our in our hour of frustration in our horror of testing in our trials and tribulation help us to to feast upon the word to to to, to gravitate towards your word to hide your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you to hide your word in our mind so that we remember your word and feast upon them to share your word with everyone around us so that we will have a chance for them to know you so that we will create an avenue for them to get to, if they accept, to come to be with you, Father. Because your love is wholesome and true. Your mercies are everlasting. They are kind. Your tender mercies. So, Father, as we go throughout today, we ask that you bless and sanctify our day. Keep us in your goodness. Hide us under the shadow of your wing. And let us be your little children. 
We wrap our prayer in the name of Jesus. We wrap our prayer in the blood of Jesus. We, we anoint our prayer with the Holy Spirit. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Okay, be blessed. All the best. Remember, Jesus loves you. Peace be unto you. As Jesus gives, so let's receive.